forward. And we're back. All right, so we are going to go through this polynomial study guide. So we're good now. And um, from the study guide, I want to eliminate question number five. Uh, question number five said to use long division. We're not going to use long division in any of these. So in, um, in question number four, six, and seven, we're going to use synthetic division. So I'm going to write in your chat synthetic division for questions number four, six, and seven. We eliminated question number five. Okay. Then in question number eight, we'll, we're going to do one of each of these just to kind of kind of guide you. But we're going to eliminate um, in here. We're going to eliminate question number eight. If you notice, it already eliminated question number eleven. There's not an eleven, so you're just going to do nine and ten. Then you're going to eliminate question number twelve. We're not going to do that one, so we're just going to have two uh, ones where you have to write the equation, find the factors, the roots, and the graph. And then on the next page. We are going to eliminate question number 14. You're just going to have 13 and 15 to do there. And um, we are then going to eliminate those bottom uh, questions. So the bottom questions are basically, what is the remainder? We're basically eliminating 17 through 23. So, so do not do questions. Uh, 8, 12, 14, and then 17 through 23. So what we are doing is, uh, so on our review, we are for our review, study guide doing 1 through 4, uh, 6 through 7. We have questions 9 and 10. We have question 13. We have 15 through 16. So what we do want to do is, so that's one through four, that's four questions, six and seven. Now we have six questions, nine and 10, it's eight, and then nine, 10, 11, is question 13, 15, 16. So we have 11 total questions. I'm going to try to go through about four of these with you, um, and then one of each type, and then we'll go to the next part. All right, so questions uh, one, two, and three, if everybody's ready. Um, we're going to look at questions one, two, and three. It says write each polynomial function in standard form and then determine the end behavior of each. So does anybody know what is uh, standard form, first of all? What, is, what does it mean for it to be written in standard form? What do I need to do to the equation? Um, yes, except let's do that the opposite way. So it, it, we want to order our exponents um, in standard form. We want the, the biggest exponent first. So yes, yeah, so we want to put the greatest exponent first. So that is going to be a number one. That's going to be to the fourth power. So if I go through and uh, can kind of write on that, if you look at question number one, we're going to take seven m to the fourth power, it's going to be our first term, plus, and then the next biggest exponent is a 2, so 4m squared, and then our next biggest exponent, this is a 1, so minus m, okay, so at this point, I have numbered it, or I've ordered it from greatest to least. So if you look at this, um, now in number two, you see you have 2t and 4t. So you can actually simplify those. You can actually add those together. So that should give you 6t. Um, and then you can order it. You have your biggest exponent, your exponent to the third. Then you have, this is t to the first power. And then you have your number with no exponent at all. Um, so we are going
going to uh, also determine the end behavior of these. So we're going to graph these. So I'm going to go to Desmos and let's graph uh, this first one. All right, so I'm going to go to Desmos. It's 7m to the fourth plus 4m squared and then minus m. So 7m to the fourth plus 4m squared minus m. All right, well, and I can make that an x if they're not. Okay, we're good. So we just change the m to an x and we're fine there. All right, so you can kind of see, so what you what you can see here is the shape of the graph. And if I need to zoom out of it, I can a little bit, but everybody should see the shape of the graph. It kind of looks like a U shape. Um, so because, and it also is a positive, there's a positive uh, leading coefficient and it's an even degree. So we should have known that it's gonna look like a U shape there. So basically, if I get out of Desmos and go back to um, where we're at in our, in our problem, I can draw or at least show what the graph looks like. So the graph here is going to kind of look like this U shape, right, where it goes in both directions. So a graph like that, our end behavior, remember how we write our end behavior, we say as x goes to negative infinity, which is all the way to the left, then y goes to, and we'll talk about that, and then as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to. All right. So as X goes all the way to the left, what is our Y doing? As X goes to negative infinity, what's our Y doing? Yeah, it's going up, it's going to infinity. So as X goes over here all the way to the left, Y is going up. And as X goes all the way to the right, Y is also going up. So our end behavior is as X goes to negative infinity, Y goes to and as x goes to positive infinity, y also goes to infinity. So in both of these cases, our y is going to infinity. Okay. Um, so you want to look through number two and three, and you want to do the same thing. As x goes to negative infinity, where is y going? Kind of make a little graph on there to help you, and then answer the end behavior. That will take you through questions two and question three. Okay, so let's go to a synthetic division problem that I think could be a little tricky. Okay, so four and six, I think you're going to be able to do fine. Um, let's move to question number seven, and let me go ahead and put question number seven on the whiteboard for you here. So if you'll take question number seven, that is 6x to the third minus x squared plus eight, divided by x plus two. Okay, before I start this problem, does anybody know why I would say that this one might be a little tricky? Any idea? So I'm gonna write it six x to the third minus x squared plus eight, divided by x plus two. Any idea why this one might be a little tricky? We're a little bit different than our other synthetic division problems. Uh, it doesn't have to start with one, and it doesn't matter about the negative. So let's just start with, let's kind of go with it and let's see what happens. So what number would we put in the box?
negative two. Okay, yeah, Samantha's onto something. There's not an X. So when we do synthetic division, we are going to go, it always has to go in order. So if you look at these, it goes from the third power to the second power and then to no power. So we're missing the first power, just the X. And if you look at all the synthetic division problems that you've done, they don't, they haven't skipped a power. So if you looked at the ones you did yesterday, they go fourth power, third power, second power, first power, uh, just a number. This one actually skips a power. It skips the X. So it goes from X to the third, to X to the second, to no X at all. So what we have to do is we actually have to leave a placeholder for that. So we cannot just write six, negative one, and eight. We're actually going to write six as our leading coefficient for x to the third, and negative one is our leading coefficient for x squared. And then we have to put a zero there as a leading coefficient for x, and then we have to put an eight. So this is why I want to show you this problem, because the zero is going to have to go in because we skipped a power. Okay, so I'm going to bring the six down, and I'm going to multiply. So what's six times negative two? Let's go through this kind of together. So I got negative 12, okay. Then what do I do here? So I'm gonna add negative one plus negative 12, that gives me negative 13. And then once I get that negative 13 below, the line, I can multiply by negative 2, that gives me 26, and everybody can add 0 plus 26 is just 26, Then I've got to multiply one more time, 26 times negative 2 is negative 52, and then I've got to add to get my remainder, my remainder is going to be negative 44, good. Now, I want to then write the problem, okay? So remember, it started with to the third power, so the answer is going to start to the second power. The answer starts one power less when you're dividing than where we started with. So instead of, of our answer starting with x to the third power, our answer is going to be 6x to the second power minus 13x plus 26. And then we have our remainder. Our remainder is negative 44 over what we're dividing by, x plus 2. So that's how you would write the answer to this problem. So remember, anytime you're starting your answer, if the problem starts to the third power, your answer will start to the second power, and you just work down one power at a time. Now questions number four and number six did not skip a power. They did not skip an exponent, so you don't have to put a zero in as a placeholder. But I wanted to show you that this question did um, skip a power, and so that is uh, kind of the important thing there. Uh, Desmos for for what? Yeah, so if I go back um, on one through three, I just typed in the equation. Seven, well, I didn't say to the second power. Seven x to the fourth plus four x squared minus x. And you can see that that's a U shape. And so the U shape tells us that as x is going to negative infinity, so to the left, y is going to infinity, and as x is going to positive infinity to the right, 
y is also going to infinity. How do you know the negative infinity stuff? Um, so for x, so in general, for x, yeah, and I'll type it on here. So for x, negative infinity is to the left, right? Because x is left and right. And for x, positive infinity is to the right. Okay, I'll get off the whiteboard. So for x, negative infinity is to the left, and for um, x, positive infinity would be to the right. So as you look at my screen here, you can tell that you're going, as you go to the left, as this graph goes to the left, it's going up to positive infinity. And as this graph goes to the right, it's also going up to positive infinity. So for the y, if it's going up, that's positive infinity. If it's going down, that's negative. Okay, so in behavior just means as x goes to the left, so as x goes to negative infinity, which means to the left, what is your y doing? And as x goes to the right, as x goes to positive infinity, x moves to the right, what is your y doing? That's your in behavior. Okay, so let's go back here to um my screen and let's take you to questions uh, we've done question six four through six we're basically through long division um, i marked out question eight let's work on question number nine real quick okay so in question number nine it wants to know the factors the roots and the graph um again we have multiple options here we could just go so you have a couple options. You could just go and graph it right from the beginning and get where it crosses the x-axis. And then that would be your roots. And then your factors are going to be the opposite of that. So like if you have a root of 2, your factor is going to be x minus 2. Um, and then that would be a way of getting all three things. Um, the other way of doing this is to uh, factor. So I'm going to show you factoring way and then I'll show you how you could go back and graph it that way as well. So x to the third minus 6x squared plus 8x. Question number nine, what do all three of those terms have in common? Do they all have that we could potentially uh, take out? They all have an x, so they all at least have one x. So we're going to, in this question, um, we're going to take out an x if we were factoring. That would be called our GCF. So we would have x squared minus 6x plus 8. And at that point, we're still going to write x down. But we would say, what two numbers multiply to give me a positive 8 and add to give me a negative 6? that would be, yeah, negative 4 and negative 2. So x minus 4 and x minus 2. If you think about it, negative 4 and negative 2 add to give me negative 6. But if I multiply those two negatives together, they multiply to give me positive 8. All right. So here are my factors. There's three of them. Factor number 1 is just x. Factor number 2 is x minus 4. And factor number three is x minus two. Okay, so we want to set all of those equal to zero. That's how you get your roots. So the first factor is just x. So if we set x equal to zero, the answer is zero. What about x minus four? What would our root be for x minus four? It would be four. And then for x minus 2, what would our root be? 2. Absolutely. So those are our roots, 0, 4, and 2. And now all we're left with is we just need to go and we need to graph the equation. So we're just going to go here um, on Desmos.
and I'm going to take the equation x to the third minus 6x squared plus 8x. And I'm going to graph it. And you can see what that looks like. It goes down, up, and through. And you can also see the three x intercepts. That's a huge part of this. Look at our three x intercepts. Look at what we had as our answers. Zero, four, and two. This is zero, four, and two is where it crosses the x axis. So, yes, the roots are where they cross the x axis. The factors are just writing that as an opposite, right? And then finally, you have your equation. So it is possible to find the roots just by graphing and then to find the factors just by making that the opposite. Remember, if your root is zero, your factor is just x. If your root is two, your factor is x minus two. And if your root is four, your factor is x minus four. So be sure to draw this graph on your paper as well for that problem. There. Okay, I'm going to mark off of, uh, get off of, well, let me just minimize Desmos. And I'm going to take away my writing here and I'm going to move down. So again, you would do number 10. In number 13, you're already given one of the, and number 14, you are already, can I go over number 10? 10 is going to be the same way. Um, so what can we take out of all of them? We can take out an X. You can actually take out 2X because all of these will go by 2. You take out 2X and then write what's left, and then, um, and then you can find where it crosses. The x axis. Um, so I'm going to go back. Hey, let me keep going here. 13 and 14, it gives you one of the factors. So it tells you two is one of the places where it crosses. It wants you to tell uh, what are the other places um, where it crosses. If we know that two is a factor, um, we have a couple options. So one of the things you are allowed to do here is that if you know the factor is x minus two, and you can use synthetic division and put two in the box and then write down what we end up getting. So remember that's that would be a three, negative one, negative 22, and then positive 24. And then after you do synthetic division, you will have a number to the third, you'll have something to the third power and that would then allow you to find the other factors. Um, you can, so another option is you can just go straight to this equation, type it in Desmos, draw the graph, find where it crosses the x-axis, write down those roots, and then make sure the opposite is the factor. Okay. Now, a couple people had a question like, what if my root is a fraction? So think about it. If, for instance, and I'm going to type it in the chat, if you go to graph something and the root is one fourth, let's say it crosses at one fourth, okay, then that factor is four x minus one. Okay, it's just the opposite. Because think about it, four x minus one equals zero, which means four x equals one, which means x equals one fourth. So if you ever get a root that is a fraction, it's easy to make it a factor also, okay? So don't let that confuse you if you, if you see one like that. All right, so I would, uh, I would say for 13 and 14, you know that we can type those into Desmos. We need to and work those and graph those, get the roots uh, and the factors. So I'm gonna step aside from those and I'm going to now take you to uh, the last part, and we said we didn't have to do um, 17 through 23, if I go back. So, the, and we didn't have to do 14, right? So 15 through 16. So 15 there, I already gave you one, and now we're gonna do number 16. 
Okay, so 16, when you divide x to the third plus 4x squared minus 2x plus k by x minus 2, the remainder is 4. What is the remainder when you divide by x plus 2? So I'm going to get you started on this. I'm not going to give you the entire um, answer because I want you to work it out because you're going to see a similar problem. Later. Um, so let me uh, take this one to the whiteboard. So if you want to get started on question number 16, I'm going to put it the beginning, like how to get you started on the whiteboard. We get a remainder of four. What is the remainder we need to divide by x plus two? All right, so let's go to um, our whiteboard here. And let's say, so we know our equation. Our equation is x to the third plus four x squared minus two x plus k. And they're telling us that when we divide this one by x minus 2, which means when we plug what in for x? Two. So when we plug 2 in for x, the remainder is four. So we're going to use that. We're going to find all those numbers, move them over to the right side, and that would give us what k equals. So we're going to end up getting k equals a certain number. And then you're going to write the entire problem down again. You're going to put that number in place of where k is. And then we're going to plug in negative 2 because we want to divide by x plus 2. So we would be plugging negative 2 in for x, and we'll see what we get. And that would be your final answer. So when you get a problem like this, you got to first find what k is by plugging in the 2, because we know that the remainder is 4. We know it equals 4, we plug in 2, so that'll help us find what k is. Once we know what k is, we can put that into our equation, and we need to plug in negative 2 to find the remainder um, once we have k. That'll be our final remainder. Um, so let me go back and just tell you what to, so I want to give you like a few things to expect to see um, tomorrow when you're looking at some of these questions. So I'm going to give you a few things that is a guarantee that you will see uh, as we go through these. And some of them weren't on the study guide because they were super, they were the easiest part. They were the very beginning of the uh, unit. So the first thing that you're going to see, and again, I'm going to type it in the chat. So things for tomorrow, okay? Number one, adding and subtracting polynomials. Okay, so when you add and subtract them, remember they have to be like terms. So like 4x to the third plus 3x to the third is 7x to the third, right? Just add and subtract them. You could multiply polynomials, and that would be the box method. If it's a binomial times a binomial, that would be FOIL or the box method if we're multiplying them. You can divide polynomials by using synthetic division. So you need to know how to use synthetic division. You can uh, graph these. So graph polynomials and find the roots and the factors. Okay. You can do the remainder theorem, which just means plug in 4x, right? And those should be as we go through, that's, that should basically be everything that we have uh, kind of went over in this unit. So we need to be able to add or subtract polynomials. We need to be able to multiply them. We need to be able to use synthetic division, um, graph the polynomials with their roots and factors, and do the remainder theorem. And then you could have to solve a polynomial by factoring, right, or by graphing. So. 
again, you may, it depends what is best for you. Remember, you could factor it or you could go to Desmos and graph it. So it'll be either, it'll be either option for you. And it won't matter which one you use. Um, if you think graphing is easier, then graph it. If you think going through and finding the GCF and factoring that is easier, then by all means, factor it. Um, eight, let's see, I get two to the third is eight plus four times two squared. That is um, <clears throat> 16, so that's 24, minus four. That's not what I, that's not what I got there. What would K be then? Yeah, so I got negative 16 for K. So we would end up with K equals negative 16, and then that would now become part of our equation, and we would be plugging in um, that number. So we would be plugging in negative 2 to get our final answer. All right, so if you'll work through the rest of this study guide, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and leave you and let you get to work on it. If you'll work through the rest of the study guide and um, send me a message if you have any questions and I'll take any of your questions. But those are the things that you're gonna see. Uh, we'll get on here tomorrow at 10. Um, I'll give you some uh, final review topics and things to look at as you look through your unit. Then I'll let you into the uh, Canvas so you can uh, answer the questions. We'll see how you did. We'll give you some immediate feedback and then uh, we'll talk about those questions as we move forward. All right. So everybody, uh, make sure you can work through that study guide, the questions that I that I um, have assigned to you and we'll continue going. Yes, you can definitely use Desmos. We are never going to say no to that. So we're going to use Desmos throughout of the process. All right. All right. Well, have a good day. And I'm going to stop the recording for now.